I'm Samantha Lackey. I'm an associate professor at Purdue um, in West Lafayette, Indiana. Um, I am also um, the founder of um, Not Your Mama's Gamer, uh, which is a website that looks at games in the video games industry uh, from a feminist perspective. Um, we've done lots of interesting things. This is one of some of our more recent things we're going to talk about today. Um, but it's also Alicia. And I'm Alicia Carabinas. Uh, I am a PhD student at Purdue University in rhetoric and composition. Uh, she is my mentor, my boss, and all things. And I also serve as managing editor of Not Your Mama's Gamer, and I do a lot of the uh, technical content. I make a lot of videos and things like that that we're going to talk about. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about how we've learned to do that too. So it's been really fun. Uh, but today we want to talk to you about uh, our work in digital advocacy and activism and how we have sort of been thrust into this mode. Uh, we chose it and we also didn't choose it. We wanted to talk about change, we wanted to talk about making a difference in an industry and community that we loved, and we ended in this place uh, through a very difficult chain of events. If you would like to talk about series. About the series. Well, yes. I'll tell you a little bit about the series. Um, Invisibility Blues is a, is a video series that we started um, that is going to be looking at race and racial representation in video games. So what that is currently looking at race and racial representation in video games. Um, it's a Kickstarter project. Um, and I will talk a little bit about how it started. <laughs> um, it, it started from what we thought was a little bit, was fairly benign. It started with a post. Um, that I had made on the uh, on the Nine Miles Gamer website about picking babies and pixels, um, in which I looked at um, a game that was announced at E3 this year. Last year. That, no, 2015, this year. No, it, well, it was announced for the first time in 2014. We'll go back to that one in a second. <laughs> um, uh, but I was looking specifically at the footage that was, that was uh, debuted in 2015 um, and, and talked about um, the fact that the animation was, according to the developers themselves, inspired by um, the animated shorts from Disney in the 1930s. If anybody's seen the animated shorts from Disney in the 1930s, you know how horribly racist and sexist they were. Um, so I, I wrote a post that talked about the history of this, of this style of animation, as well as my personal reaction to the footage that we had seen in and it's really important to note that it was definitely a, her personal reaction and it was framed in that way. And we have to talk about that, if you'd like to go to the next slide, um, because we all have different associations with these kinds of, of this kind of content, and these are some of the comparisons that she was drawing in the piece. This is from the game Cuphead that she had referenced. This is obviously from one of the older animations. We have some other images from the older animations. They're small on the screen, and I'm sorry for that. Um, but the entire piece was framed, and when I saw this, I felt this way. It acknowledged the passion that had gone into the game. This is a hand-drawn game. They're trying to replicate techniques from the 1930s. It's a really cool undertaking. But with that undertaking, even in interviews, when you've talked to people have talked to Studio in DHR, there is a lack of engagement with the source of the materials of the associations with it. Uh, and that's what Sam talked about in her piece. That was somehow, <laughs> I don't know how it happened magically, seen as calling for a ban, boycott, censorship of the game. Yes. Uh, so, I'll, yeah, I'll take this one. Um, I watched this unfold because I'm also often the person who monitors any mentions of us that happen to come up on sites like 4chan, like Reddit. Um, I, we both watch the blog comments, but I usually do the wider uh, checking because I'm, all, I'm always glued to my phone and everything else. And it started very slowly with some comments on the blog, very long comments, um, arguing everything from the technicalities of the art style to how dare we speak out about our feelings, nobody cares about feelings, only facts matter. And the fact is, this is a game, and a game can't be inherently racist or anything else, and neither can an art style. Um, it started there, and then it moved to uh, Reddit. There were at least three threads, on, uh, three different threads on Reddit and different subreddits 
within a few days, and from there to Twitter, and then to 4chan. And when it got to 4chan, it got a little scary for me to watch what was happening, because they were starting to post Sam's name, and her university affiliation, and things that they could do to maybe think about getting her fired. Uh, and at the same time, a friend of mine was going through something similar in Toronto, and there had been a campaign that was undertaken. Uh, her department received over 150 phone calls about how, because she had said she was a feminist, she shouldn't be a university professor. Uh, so I began to be very concerned about this. But instead of stopping, we did something else. Because luckily, or unluckily, or however you want to see it, we were also going through in our in a geographical area what we started to call a flood of biblical proportions. Um, and Alicia and her family were like flooded out of their homes, so they were all staying with me. Um, would you mind talking into the mic? Oh, I'm sorry. No, nope. is that better? That's okay. much better. Good. Thank you. Um, I talk really loud, so I try not to use mics because then I'll deafen everyone. Um, well, so Alicia and her family were actually staying with me while we were waiting for the water to recede. Um, so we kind of sat down uh, at our at my dining room table and said, "What can we do at this point?" Um, and the answer was, "Let's see if we can make it worse." Um, <laughs> So, that's okay. So, though, let's see if we can make it worse. Um, so we, we said, let's do a response to the responses that we've had thus far. So we uh, sat down and we made a video um, that looked at the animation style, not only of Cuphead, but of, all of other games that had used similar styles without importing um, with it the racism that was inherent in the 1930s animation shorts. Um, now, and, and we make note that I've been doing this for five years. We've made dozens upon dozens of videos. This was not a new thing. Um, I've been making videos for Naughty Mama's Gamer since 2010, 2011. Um, so, it, but it was just at this point and with this game uh, that it seemed to bring the wrath of hell down on us, right? <clears throat> So, go ahead. Uh, no, I was just going to tell you to talk into the mic. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, but because I was at her house, because we were together, we were watching all of this unfold, uh, we thought, well, man, you know, Sam's arguments are actually being ignored, so let's double down and put the footage side by side with what we're seeing and what we're experiencing. And she gave me a, a little bit of a lesson in the older animation. I wasn't as familiar with some of these things as she was. So we sat down and we looked at it and we said, yeah, let's make a video, let's put it together and try to bring this back to an argument or debate rather than a series of accusations about who feels what, when, and what, how they're, they're permitted to feel. Uh, so we made this video and we posted it two days after the original post on June 19th, 2015. And I'm just going to play a little bit of footage um, from, if I can get it, near the end, not that far. Uh, of this other game that we found called Fleisch and Cherry at Crazy Hotel. And this was also done in a 1930s style of animation. Uh, but if you'll notice, you have, you have to fast forward it just a little bit. Um, it's really hard to keep your videos in Prezi ahead of time. So uh, we're on the struggle bus with that. Uh, they, the, the creators of this game, tried to make something that was a little bit different. Um, the main character here, Cherry, is desexualized from some of the representations of women in the older styles of animations. Um, and if you can advance it just a touch to the pictures. Uh, a lot of those ideas that were seen sometimes as troubling or have poor associations in some of the older animation styles here in the contemporary world have been removed or stripped away. A lot of the characteristics de-emphasized so that there's not as clear a correlation and not as many caricatures while still mimicking the style. So we wanted to present this game, Cuphead, where the creators were doing something really beautiful but not engaging with some of the things that came up and we're not the only ones who have raised these objections. I skipped that slide for time. Um, but other people have talked about it. And here is another game doing something similar where they did have that conversation and those thoughts did go into it. And that's the point that we wanted to make. You can pay homage to something and you can build something while still acknowledging that our world has changed and is hopefully continuing to change for the better. So at that point, it got pretty interesting because not only did, it, in response to it, it's like our, our comments 
<laughs> I kind of leveled up along with the work that we were doing. Um, and, and this is actually one of the more benign um, of the comments. Um, a lot of them never saw the night of day. We, we this one didn't them. either. This one did not either. Um, but a lot of them we um, deleted immediately if they were threatening. We archived them. Um, we archive them in a, in a file that we keep um, because that's what most of us who work on the internet and do this kind of work do because in case we never need to um, submit them somewhere, <laughs> we need to have them. Um, and, and, and it's interesting um, to watch these kinds of things happen. So Alicia and I, were, I made this joke once and, and she said, maybe I shouldn't tell this joke. And I was just like, so what do we do next? And I was like, yeah, because it's always kind of like, we're like, well, that last thing didn't get us killed. What can we do next to see what we can do? <laughs> uh, so, but the, the interesting thing here is that in addition to the comments that we got that were angry and threatening, um, we also got a lot of positive reinforcement from the community from game developers, from game designers, from and from other games, scholars. And from and even Disney scholars who were like, yes, this is exactly what we need to be paying attention to. These are things that have gone uninterrogated too long. Good work. We want to see more. And then those are conversations that need to be happening. And so we, because I was still at her house, we sat down and said, what do we want to do at this point? Do we want to just hope it goes away and not deal with it? Or do we want to keep doing it? And I said, you know, it only took us a couple of days to make that first video. Maybe we could make some more. And Sam got this look on her face that I've never seen before and will probably never see again, where her eyes just got so big and she said, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> I said, oh no, what have I signed up for? Um, but then we began to plan. And that's where everything began to change. And we decided to take it to Kickstarter because what we needed, we needed, we needed things. We needed hardware. Um, we needed software. We needed to have access to um, more games for both of us. That you know, it's, while it's easier for me to do it because you know, this is my research. But we have a, a grad student who doesn't have as ready that readily have access to these kinds of things. Uh, so we had to think about all of the things that we would need and we began to make a list and a possible budget. Um, and within that budget, we not only had to include those items, hardware, software, hundreds of games, but also time. Because it's just us. And as we began to talk about it and as we launched the Kickstarter, as soon as we had some ideas about what kinds of themes we might want to do, um, we began to think about what we needed. We thought, we've got to crowdfund this, so we'll launch. Um, we've learned that maybe a little more planning before that, uh, if we ever do it again. But we had a pretty solid foundation and base, and we said, you know, we asked for initially for $4,800. We said, this is the money we need to pay some honorariums, to get some to people to speak with us, to support it. Other researchers, maybe who would think people who have specialties beyond us, uh, beyond the things that we do, and for all of the games. But we never asked for any support personnel. And we still don't have any. Everything that we do is just us. Uh, so that's been a challenge. But not only did we have to think and plan in terms of what we needed, we also had to think and plan in terms of safety. Because we both have children. We both have families and pets. And we've watched people swatted. Sam has experienced some of that in the past. Uh, we spent hours trying to scrub our online profiles. I put a lot of videos up of my children for extended family. I had to try to make sure that those were hidden but could still be accessed by people who were not tech savvy. I had to make sure our addresses were not listed anywhere. I had to think about everything that I've ever posted on the internet. For instance, I'm very active in a lot of online venues. I had to think about what happens if somebody spends 12 hours cataloging things that I said back in 2007 and how that might impact my career. Because there are people who do that just because you dare voice an opinion about a video game. And, and one of the things, luckily, like I said, we were, we were still at my house at this point. Um, <laughs> I just really moved in. Yeah. Um, but you, we've also, I had also had to go through, because my mother leaves her phone number and her address listed and everything. She's always been like, I don't need to anonymize myself in the phone book. So I actually had to go through these sites and do it not only for myself, but to do it for my mother as well, who is an older woman who lives alone. Right? Um, and we've seen over and over again that these same people who post these kinds of things on the internet have been calling the elderly parents of people and making threats toward their children. 
Um, and, and, and my mother would totally and completely freak out if that happened. So I had to go through and do this not only for myself in terms of manually asking that my name be removed from databases, but also ask, make the same ask for my mother. And the other thing that we had to do was sit down and think about what our goal really was. What do we want to accomplish uh, with a project like this? And it's not enough to just say, oh, we want things to change. We want things to be different. We want our children to grow up in a more inclusive environment. Because that's an amorphous goal. What do we want? OK, so we sat down and talked about it. What we would like to see, and this is what came about when we talked with the game developers and creators who were coming to us and saying, yes, we need these conversations, is we need more people in those rooms, privy to those discussions about writers. We need somebody to stand up and say, you know what, maybe we need to at least engage with these ideas. Maybe before you include that scene of sexual assault in your game, you need to think about what the impact is. Maybe when you're creating a character generator, you need to make sure that if you can have people of color, that those men can maybe also have beards that aren't long and straight. Uh, and we thought about all of these things that we wanted to accomplish, and it all came back to just taking a moment to demonstrate, here is what we see, here's what it means, here are the implications that maybe people sitting in these rooms creating games are not thinking of. We need to widen the conversation. And so we got funded on August 8th, and we funded at 270% uh, of our original goal, so that was really nice. Um, thank you. We're very, we're very proud of that, but the, the hard truth is that it's still only $10,000 and we're making eight videos. Um, and I already to cut the first video, which debuted yesterday, uh, I cut uh, seven and a half hours of footage, finally, at the end, down to 22 minutes. Um, we had to learn how to create effects. We had to learn to do better sound production. We had to learn to up our production quality because, of course, people are already comparing what we're doing to what Anita Sarkeesian does, but she has a team. You know, she's got all these people, she raised $160,000, we raised ten. There's a big difference there. Uh, but we'd like to show you, in our remaining time, a very short clip from the video that debuted yesterday, so you can see what we're doing and what we're about. This first video, as she finds the place, is about character creation engines. Could you put a mic next to the speaker to make sure we can hear it? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Sure. 717. But it doesn't show the timer on you. <laughs> and if we can't find the exact spot, I mean, we can surely just take a moment to talk about what's happening on the screen. So one of the things that we looked at, we looked at hair options that were available on character creation. And one of the things that we saw, we looked at, what, five or six games for this video total? We, we included some footage from other games, including one um, that came out several years ago that, in which you, there were, for instance, um, NPCs, non-player characters, who were not white in the game. But in the character creation engine, you could only make a white character, no matter what. You could change your hair color, but you could only be the same shade of pale. Um, we talked to Sharif Jackson of Gaming Looks Good uh, about beards, because, as I mentioned, um, often you cannot make characters who, uh, who have short, curly beards. They have to be long and straight, magnificent, glistening beards. Uh, beards of dwarves, um, <laughs> if you've got it to play. ...the range of real black hairstyles, and added at least some of these styles should be available in a character reader. Of course, the Nintendo Wii system was fairly simple at the time, <laughs> but this yeah, range just kind of to demonstrate what's always missing. Sharif said he's added more facial hair to his characters as his own has grown, and the games with the closest options tend to be sports games, like the recent NBA 2K16. Sharif speculated that maybe this is because the athletes are mostly men of color, but that doesn't mean similar options shouldn't be available in other character creators. Well, I just noticed something we have to fix. You see here options like hair, noses, eyes, and skin shape. I really like it that I just discovered a problem with the video while we're here. That's great. Um, but some of the things that we noticed were that, uh, for instance, and this is where we'll wrap up, is that um, there was a lot of rhetoric that was really troubling in the lore, especially of fantasy games. Like, uh, the one black race in a certain game doesn't share blood with anybody else. They're totally separate. So in some of the games in that series, this was in the Elder Scrolls, you could make 
only those characters dark skinned, only those people in that particular race. And other ones could be sort of dark, but when you got them darker, they just looked like they rolled in mud. And it was really troubling to see these kinds of options because you're also limited in your play style. And if a lot of people, according to our research, are making characters that are idealized versions of themselves, what does it tell those players if when they're making that idealized version that they can only have certain kinds of hair? If they can only be certain shades? What's the impact? And one of the interesting things that we were able to do in, in, in this first video, and something that we're going to continue to do as the videos go on, is we were able to bring together the voices of academics, of gamers, of game designers, um, and to have this conversation in these small 20-ish minute videos um, that we've seen uh, kind of grow exponentially already, because this first video was supposed to look simply at character creation, and we've already realized that this first video is going to have to be video 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3, and that in order to cover all of the things that we wanted to cover. So we, we find ourselves like, okay, originally we were gonna make eight videos, now we're up to 10. Um, so <laughs> it's gonna get more and more fun as this, as this goes on, right? But I think that we're gonna manage to do some good, and that's what we're here for. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.